Class of 2022, take your seats. Good morning. Welcome, Mashpee families, school committee, honored guests, and of course, the graduating class of 2022. I'm Josh Tarski, the interim principal of Mashpee Middle and High School. And thank you for joining us this day as we recognize the hard work and dedication of our students. And as we wish them great success as they move on from high school to the next chapter of their lives. At this time, I ask that everyone please stand and remain standing for our graduation chamber choir sings the national anthem. Olivia. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Great job, Olivia. Now I'd like to call to the stage Cheyenne Hendricks and Kaylin Oakley Robbins for the Wampanoag Prayer. Mana ka niko na hajik. Katapatanamu wachi kisak. Katapatanamu wachi anakwasak. Katapatanamu wachi aki. Katapatanamu wachi sibuash. Katapatanamu wachi katahanash. Katapatanamu wachi wami awa asak. Katapatanamu wachi wami natonkosak. Ananama anian, nanama nat, weepy wanikak. Ananama anian, asinat, weepy somboak. And so the English translation of that is it's titled A Prayer for Every Time. Creator and ancestors, thank you for all things. Thank you for the sky. Thank you for the stars. Thank you for the land. I thank you for the rivers. I thank you for the oceans. I thank you for all creatures. I thank you for all my relations. Help us to see only what is good. Help us to do only what is right. Thank you, and thank you for sharing the amazing Wampanoag culture with all in attendance. 
At this time, I'd like to welcome to the stage Superintendent of Schools, Patricia M. DeBoer, for opening remarks. First, I would like to say that the Mashpee Public Schools recognize and honor the many generations of Wampanoag people who have lived and been sustained in this territory for more than 10,000 years. And I also want to point out, we did have, I believe, the Red Hawk singers confirmed. They're not here yet, so hopefully if they do arrive, we will accommodate them um, as part of our program. So somewhere in here is my speech. Where is that? OK. And I told to the graduates this morning in the auditorium, I did try to cut this down, uh, but I couldn't, there are parts I just couldn't cut out. So apologize ahead of time for about 10 minutes of my conversation, but I just feel it's really important of some of the things I'd like to say. I am super grateful to be here today. This is one of those be in the moment, be present opportunities. For me, every day with my students is a wonderful day. But today is particularly exceptional. It's a day to celebrate a milestone in the life of each of our amazing graduates. It <coughs> It's a day filled with hope as we send these graduates off to begin the next phase of their life. And it's a day to recognize and acknowledge the effort and love our families have put into raising these outstanding human beings. It is also a day to celebrate our connected community that has embraced these children throughout their educational journey through the Mashpee Public Schools. Our school committee, members of the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe, members of Team Mashpee, community members, and our families have worked collaboratively to produce the best possible outcomes for our graduates. We are blessed. Life impact is the concept I'm keying on a little bit today. My role as superintendent of the Mashpee schools is very personal to me and very rewarding. I'm hopeful that I've been able to positively impact the lives of our graduates, and more importantly, I want to make sure the graduates recognize the significant impact that they have had on my life. My life, professionally and personally, has been so greatly enriched through my interactions with each of these students by being able to share in their joys and support them through the challenges and through the relationships we've built over the years. How often do we really think about our impact on others? Today, I also want to take a few minutes to recognize our 21-22 retirees, and some of them are with us today. These individuals impacted the lives of our graduates during their journey. This year's retirees include Sandra Alberico, Mary Crimmins, and Kimberly Palmer from the Coombs School, Amy Campbell, Sean O'Connor, Jackie Ristalis, and Sean Withington from the Quashnet School, Joanne Arnold, Susan Bryant, Sean Sheekwoin, Dan Leader, and Ellen Wechter from the Mashpee Middle High School, Ellen DeMello and Gail Hannon from the Central Office, and our Gus Stickley, our district-wide food services director. Yes. We are so grateful to our retirees for their dedication and commitment to our students and their families. We wish them an each a retirement that's filled with wonderful new experiences, good health, and joy. And we hope that they never stop sharing their gifts with the world. They are starting a new phase in their lives, just like our graduates are today. We started a new tradition this year with the class of 2022, and each graduate was given the opportunity to select any staff member who positively impacted them during their pre-K to grade eight journey. About 30 graduates participated and each wrote a letter to their selected staff member. And then last week, we went around presenting them with a life impact diploma. So each of the graduates wearing their cap and gown read their letter. And I have a couple of examples in the graduates' own words. Ty Frizoko to Mrs. Jagat, you helped put me on the path to success and set me up to succeed in not only school, but in life. Sophia Braganzi to Mrs. Schreiner, you were positive and encouraging, but most of all, inclusive. You would let me take a pit stop to hug my sister in the hallway and somehow always managed to put up with my endless rambling. Almost 10 years later, you are still part of everything. You helped make me, me. From Olivia Cloutier to Mrs. Whitten, you were patient and kind. You took time to get to know me and what my personality was like. I always appreciated how patient you were with me and making sure that I was okay. 
Fifth grade was one of my favorite school years because your class environment was really positive and happy. Thank you for always being there and pulling me back when I needed to be out of Livy land for a bit, but thank you also for allowing me to drift off there when I needed to. From Megan Bennett, also to Mrs. Whidden, as I struggled with friendships and finding my way, you were always in my corner looking out for me, no matter what. You always showed me all the ways to embrace myself and my personality. I always knew walking into your classroom that I was loved, cared for, encouraged to be myself, and supported in any aspect. Miley Beal to Mrs. McBrien, your class was one of those safe spaces for me. Your class was one of the first that truly challenged me. You provided an environment that was both encouraging and challenging. From Karen Mayen to Mrs. Wilbur, your influence helped me enhance the silliness and weirdness that is inside of me, which has guided me to embrace my quirks and become my true and authentic self. I want to be a teacher who makes students welcome and accepted in my classroom and encourages kids to be their true and authentic selves, just like you did for me. Isabella Egan to Mrs. Green, all I needed was someone to believe in me in order for me to believe in myself, and you helped me achieve this. Kalia Eaton to Mr. Bedard, I can only dream to have the impact on people that you had on me in my future career as a nurse. From Kit Bold to Mr. Souza, you introduced me to many things I love and made creativity something of great importance in your students' lives. Samantha Rosam to Mrs. Gould, thank you for positively impacting my life by teaching me at a young age that you should not care what others think of you. You always told us to be who we are and to embrace it. And the final one I'm sharing is Cheyenne Hendricks, also to Mrs. Gould. So as we approach almost a decade since we've seen each other, I need you to know that all your beautiful qualities as a teacher and as a person are not only magnetic, but contagious. I hope to live my life being the fun, joyful, and hopeful person that you were for me. And this experience was a gift to the individuals who received it, but watching the, the compassion that each individual had for the other one really does demonstrate the impact that we have on each other that we may not even realize. So to the members of the class of 2022, you are a very special class in so many ways. Not only because of the knowledge, skills, and character qualities each of you possesses and has shared with us over many years, but also for the resilience and growth you have demonstrated during a very unique time or time period in our history. During the past 26 and a half months, in addition to navigating the COVID-19 pandemic and all of the life-altering experiences that came with it, you have also experienced unprecedented national and international political chaos, increased economic uncertainty, civil rights struggles, and climate change fears. With support from your family, from the members of our MPS staff, from your classmates, and from your Mashpee community, you have learned and grown. All of your experiences over the past months will forever serve as a landmark in your life. You've been given the gift of perspective, a gift that will serve you well as you move forward. You've learned to make the most of every day and have positively impacted those around you in ways that you may never realize or know. I hope that you use this new perspective to build a meaningful life that's filled with I get to experiences rather than I have to experiences. By adopting this mindset of I get to in all that you do, you'll be amazed at how grateful you will feel throughout your life. With gratitude comes happiness and joy. Be an active and grateful hero in your own life. Your gift from the Mashpee School Committee is the book 212, The Extra Degree. At 211 degrees, water is super hot. But at 212 degrees, just one more degree, water boils. With boiling water comes steam, and steam can power a locomotive. The main message in the book is to consistently apply an extra degree of effort in all that you do. How many new opportunities will you discover because you chose to apply a small amount of effort beyond what you normally do? Success with anything, success in anything, has one fundamental aspect, effort. So make 212 degrees a wonderful new habit in your life and in your world. It's a backdrop to all that you do. It's a habit that will create fantastic life results for you and will help serve as an influence on those around you. Here's just one example of how you can embrace the 212 degree challenge. 
Do something helpful and unexpected for one friend each week for an entire year to create more than 52 additional possibilities of influence <coughs> sorry, and impact. Commit to operating at 212 degrees in everything you do to guarantee to increase your results positively and in so many cases exponentially. The secret to anyone's success is the and then some syndrome. The top people always do what's expected and then some. To my graduates, your path does not have to be clear at this time. You need to view everything that you do as an opportunity to learn and to grow, which is what I have found through my wisdom of many years. Commit to working hard with every role you take on. Be your best self and be your true self. If you do what is expected and then some, you will land exactly where you are supposed to be and where you want to be. Now, I often read the Outside the Lines articles that come out every week in the enterprise, and I've pulled a few um, words of wisdom from some of our graduates. So Olivia Oliveira, she wrote, if I could go back to give myself advi advice, it would be probably to keep fighting for what I want and dream of, because in the end, it will pay off, and that, is, and that it's okay to have bad days as long as I know I can still pick myself up from them and become an even better version of myself day by day. Ella Squarcia said, as a freshman, I didn't have my own voice. I would tell my freshman self to care less about what anyone else thinks. Cheyenne Hendricks wrote, as a senior, I have such a better outlook on what it means to value your time, love yourself, and just to live life. I wouldn't go back and change anything because everything I have done and gone through has made me the person I am today. Although I wish I could really tell my freshman self that my effort was good enough, my hard work had a purpose, and to remember who I was when things get stressful. I feel like the old me spent a lot of time trying so hard to be everything for other people instead of just being okay with myself. But now, even though I will always have a lot of growing to do, I can appreciate myself and the time I spend with other people. Kalia Eaton wrote, advice I would give my freshman self is to just go with your gut and trust yourself because you are capable of making good decisions that will benefit you. The last one I'm gonna read is from Brady Johnston and he was responding to the prompt, if you could switch places with one person for a week, who would it be and what would you want to do? His answer, if I could switch places with one person for a week, it would be with one of my best friends, Michael Perino. Michael has TAR syndrome and rides around in a wheelchair most of the day. Michael's love for basketball and football is like no other, and I would want him to experience what it would be like to be able to play. While battling his disability, he still finds a way to surround himself with joyful and loving friends and keep a smile on his face every day. We are all better people for having Michael Perino in our lives. Yeah. I only have a page and a half, so it shouldn't be too long. <laughs> so I wanna thank all our graduates today, and actually all of the Mashpee students, for bringing joy and value to my work and happiness to my life. Throughout my career, and especially throughout the past 26 and a half months, when I need to fill my resiliency cup, I find a way to be in the presence of students, of our students. They always make me feel happy and more hopeful for a brighter future. We hope that we've provided you, each of our Mashpee graduates, with the knowledge, skills, and strategies to support you being a purposeful communicator and collaborator, an engaged citizen, an empowered knowledge seeker, a critical thinker and problem solver, and an individual who sets goals and makes personal decisions that result in a healthy and happy life, someone equipped to be resilient. With these portrait of a graduate competencies, you can be your best self. We are so proud of each of you and are confident that you will continue to shine a bright light on your families, on the district, on our Mashpee community, modeling excellence every day, being better today than yesterday. Choose to be a happy person because happy people don't necessarily have everything, they just make the most of everything they have. Give yourself the gift of slowing down, of being true to who you are, of recognizing what really matters, of identifying what really doesn't, and of embracing the awesome gift that this life is. Live inspired. I live inspired every day because of you. I feel blessed. 
Our graduates were lucky enough to have an assembly with Dr. Adolph Brown on the very first day of their senior year. Do you all remember that? Mm -hmm. Does Sean Gonzalez remember that? He actually was an active member of the um, assembly. But a couple of messages I wanted to circle back from Dr. Brown for these group of graduates. First one, be stronger than your best excuse. Think about that. His second one was be a balcony person, not a basement person. And lastly, he said, get in the habit of asking yourself, does this support the life I am trying to create? And you are all starting out at that phase. Before I do my final paragraph, I do want to acknowledge and express sincere gratitude to class advisor Deanne Almeida. She has demonstrated our hashtag 212 the extra degree in everything, absolutely everything, she has done for this class over the past four years. She has been an amazing advisor, and I hope you all realize the gift that you had in that person. So thank you, Ms. Almeida. I know where she is, over there. <laughs> So lastly, and I do say this every year, but I can't not say it, but in the words of Winnie the Pooh, how lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. <laughs> Thank you all for making it so difficult for me to say goodbye. You have positively impacted me and are forever a part of my life tapestry. Each of you has earned your falcon wings, and now it is the time to spread them, soar, and pursue your passion. Lead by example and make our world a better place by honoring and celebrating diversity, by working proactively to ensure equity for everyone, and by modeling an inclusive mindset. Share your gifts with the world, smile often, and never lose the joy inside you. Remember that you are falcons forever, and the nest is always here to support and embrace you. Through our words and our actions, we impact those around us. I promise to always throw the starfish back into the ocean. I will make a difference for that one, and will you? Finally, why is it great to be in Mashpee? Just look around. It is because of all of you. It is because of all of us. Hashtag we are Mashpee. Thank you. All right, at this time, we are going to be joined by a member of the Red Hawk Singers. This first song I composed a couple years back, <clears throat> and uh, the words in it says, Nutumasaman Masipiat, which means we are from Mashpee. So I felt that uh, to be a suiting song for you graduates. Uh, we'd like to uh, congratulate you from the Wampanoag Nation for uh, completing this task. Uh, this is just the beginning, so you have to uh, continue what you've, the hard work you've been doing and try to bring back some of that education back to this community so you can share it with younger, uh, younger people. The, song, uh, the second song is going to be a, a victory, a travel song to protect you while you're uh, in the world, traveling, learning, experiencing. And hopefully it carries you in a good way. <clears throat> Hey, hi, 
All right, thank you so much. So tough act to follow, but I'm going to do my best. All right. Okay. So once again, welcome. Before becoming an administrator, I taught seniors. Since becoming an administrator, 
I see a lot of seniors who ask me various types of things. Some for recommendations and permissions, others simply come to talk and share their viewpoints on a wide range of issues. Over the years, I've learned some things about you all. What worries you and your peers at about this stage? What I've learned is that it's not so much what college you get into or what career you pursue. You're most concerned about your character, the kind of person you want to be, and how to become that person. So I'm a former English teacher. I like metaphors and analogies and stories. So I thought I'd tell you a story. Um, I think it's a good way to synthesize learning and lessons, okay? So years ago, I was in the US Army and uh, trying out for the US Army Special Forces or the Green Berets. And inside the Special Forces Selection and Assessment course, there's a land navigation exercise, one of the most feared and famed in the military compendium called the Star Course. The task, it starts at night, on a night specifically chosen for its low illumination. And the task is to track down five points that are marked with a chem light that glows in the dark. And they're spread out, who knows how far, throughout the North Carolina wilderness. And if you were to piece all these dots together at the end, you'd see they'd form a star, hence the name. So the military gives you a 35-pound 30 30 rucksack, a compass, a map, and of course, training. As a part of basic training and every other military course that I went through surrounding the STAR course, one overriding theme became apparent. The Army thinks it's indispensable for its soldiers to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Cold, wet, dirty, tired, these are the standard. Endless physical fitness, random wake-ups throughout the night, dips in sandy ponds immediately before taking off for your first point. The Army was good at making us uncomfortable, and you know, it worked. I got used to operating under suboptimal conditions, and it was never as bad as I thought. I grew comfortable suffering, found dignity in doing it well. And I learned a valuable lesson interpersonally, that nothing bonds people more than a shared suffering. My closest friends formed quickly because we shared a misery and a mutuality of purpose, a common mission. Class of 2022, bearing the brunt of the pandemic's focus, has seen its share of discomfort more than any class I've seen in all my years of education. Whether it's having to wear a mask, doing social distancing, quarantining, remote and hybrid learning, the civil rights issues, political upheavals, the school shootings, obstacles almost unimaginable a few years past have presented themselves consistently before you. The ability to focus on your goals, to persevere and be resilient and flexible through any and all problems has given you gifts, class of 2022. My guess is that these years of unpredictability and strangeness, hardship and struggle, have made you more comfortable being uncomfortable. My guess is that many of you experiencing and sharing similar hardships has made you closer. As you've stretched out a helping hand to your classmates and peers to reach this very day. Remember these years and these teachings. Take pride and strength, knowing that as you move beyond MMHS, this learning extends well beyond the classroom's lecture, the daily project, and should be reflected upon as a reference when other difficulties present themselves to you later in life. So this brings us back to the STAR course. Another theme the military stressed in its training was teamwork. As a part of the assessment process, the Army tests a soldier's ability to get along with one another, regardless of color, creed, gender. They feel that if you make a person cold, tired, wet, their true colors will shine through. If you were pretending to be a hard worker or a people person under tough conditions, those pretensions simply fade. If cadre, military teachers, can't see you for who you are, they don't have to. There's a peer evaluation system 
where soldier classmates rank each other based on utility, hard work, likability. If a soldier falls too low, they risk being disqualified from the Special Forces pipeline. The thinking is that for the nation's most important missions, no one is an island. No one can complete the mission alone. The group of individuals must focus on being more than themselves. They must be able to collaborate effectively, build trust, work hard, divide out tasks effectively, and overcome obstacles as a cohesive unit. I'm telling you this to remind you, everyone in here, that we need each other, that we're on the same team. Sometimes that message is lost. In the years to come, some of this graduating class's task is going to be figure out how to get along more effectively, heal some of these societal wounds that are old and renewed, how to collaborate to tackle some of the big issues plaguing the planet, this country. These are big tasks. But no one's going to defeat hate, waste, or ignorance on their own. If we can remember we are stronger, better when united, when we're able to discuss the difficult items openly, generously pausing assumptions and biases, that an individual struggle is in fact a group struggle, the better chance we have to overcome whatever the issue is, and ultimately push humanity as a whole forward. Back to the start. We were taught our pace count, how many left feet touches I would make in a 100 meter measured stretch. For me, 67 left feet. Every 67 left feet, I knew I traveled 100 meters. Over and again, one to 67, one to 67. Check how many rocks. Every time I got to 67, I put a little rock, marked 100 meters, count how many rocks I have, I know how far I've traveled. If I got five rocks in my pocket, I traveled 500 meters, 10,000 meters. Okay? With this technology, I always knew distance. I'm telling you this because as this graduating class steps off, remember to rely on what you've learned okay, and have experienced to this point. What you've learned is vast. Part of what the K-12 education system does is spread the buffet out before you, make you take as many classes and subjects that we as a society think are essential that will literally prepare you for tomorrow. Whether you wanted to or not, you learn stuff. It's not just academic, it's interpersonal. It's social, it's emotional, athletic, extracurricular, theatrical, logical. It's anything that's given you insight or gives you insight. Remember to leverage this, what you know, as you go into the nearing unknown. Even in the dead of night, walking into a forest, there was something comforting, a sense of control, that I had the tools metaphorically to light the way. Between the compass and the pace count, knowing where I started and where I was trying to go, I never felt helpless or hopeless. The military trained us how to read a map, plotting point A to point B. When plotting my points, the cadre again trained us to add a couple additional items to protect us. Cadre called these the left and right limits. These were obvious major landmarks, like an interstate. If you're in the forest and you come up to an interstate, don't cross it, right? If, you're f if you were too far to the left and you did that, you risked being disqualified, being super lost, um, and a whole bunch of other bad things. If you went to the, too far to the right, same thing. If you overshot your point, what they called the backstop, you were also in danger of being disqualified. I tell you this because one of the great cliches is that it is a great thing to think outside the box. And despite the virtues of being able to do this, it is also great to be boxed in. There's something comforting and beautiful about having boundaries and the discipline to enforce them. Having a clear definition of how far you're willing to go in any direction. As important as the will to push on is, the wisdom to know when to pause before crossing a line not worth crossing, recognizing and showing restraint is of equal importance. 
Accordingly, I learned during the runs, the practice runs, before the actual uh, land navigation exercise, to spend a little extra time before I started pursuing points, to plot and plan, check and recheck. This little extra time and precaution spent at the beginning would save me from a silly, ask, uh, a silly error that could prove disastrous. After speedily rushing through an iteration or two and getting super lost, I quickly learned the carpenter's maxim of measuring twice and cutting once. Class of 2022, take this time as well. The summer or whatever is left and available before you start your upcoming journeys, whatever they may be. Take the time to do the soul searching, asking yourselves the deep probing questions about what you're curious about. Take the time to find out what your point is, what your points are. Where are you heading and why? Get your definitions. What kind of character traits will you define and ingratiate into yourselves? Courage, faith, humility, humor, something else? Take the time to get that perspective, the answers that really matter. The extra prying, plotting, and insight can be the difference between plotting a proper course, one that saves you time, and ultimately more accurately reflects the kind of life you want to live and the person you want to be. And make no mistake, no amount of classroom teaching. This is on you. You are the only ones that have those answers. Take the time to think about that material. We can't give you that. One more thing. For those of you whose high school experience wasn't ideal, either academically or otherwise, you made it. All right? You're getting a fresh start. Take what you learned, okay? What worked and what didn't. Make adjustments, okay? I promise life doesn't end at high school. Anyone outside of this first tent will tell you that, okay? Um, <laughs> look for your curiosities. Take the time to reflect and go boldly towards your dreams. No result here that happened in high school should have the power to prevent you realizing your dreams. Okay, that's a simple fact. I wish we could have spent more time together, but I'm really grateful for the time that we have had. It's been, it's been a joy. I, we, the faculty, staff, overarching community, we believe in you. Okay? Go out, do your best. Never letting lack of effort being the reason why your dreams don't come true. Make yourselves and us proud, ultimately bettering yourselves and the world in all the ways that you deem necessary. It's been an honor to be your principal, and once again, congratulations. Thank you. All right, and I will be followed by Mashpee Middle High School Graduation Chamber Choir, singing Photograph by Ed Sheeran. If anyone remembers the song from sixth grade, feel free to sing along. Loving can hurt. Loving can hurt sometimes. But it's the only thing that I know 
When it gets hard, you know it can get hard sometimes. Is the only thing that makes us feel alive. We keep the sob in a photograph. We make these memories for ourselves. Where our eyes are never closing, hearts are never broken, times forever frozen still. So you can keep me inside the pocket of your ripped jeans holding me closer till our eyes meet you won't ever be alone wait for me to come home loving can heal loving can mend your soul and it's the only thing I swear it will get easier Remember that with every piece of you And it's the only thing we take with, with us, us when we die. die We keep this love in a photograph We make these memories for ourselves when our eyes are never closing, our hearts are never broken, and time's forever frozen still. So you can keep me inside the pocket of your ripped jeans, holding me closer till our eyes meet. You won't ever be alone. And if you hurt me, Oh, that's okay, baby, only words bleed Inside these pages you just hold me And I won't ever let you go Wait for me to come home 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 Me inside the necklace you go when you were 16 Next to your heart be where I should be Keep it deep within your soul And if you hurt me That's okay baby, only words bleed Inside these pages you just hold me I won't ever let you go when I'm away, I will remember how you taught me all of these years living in mash P. I will never be alone. You will always be home. Great job. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, the next speaker will be our school committee chairperson, Nicole Bartlett. put me behind like the best things and then they're really hard to follow. Um, so graduates, Mashpee families, faculty, staff, and friends, it is again a great privilege to be here representing the Mashpee School Committee. Our other members are seated over here to the right of the stage. I want to start by acknowledging that at this very minute, this very moment, we are continuing the tradition of education and community that has been cultivated on this land for thousands of years. 
for we are in the ancestral homelands of the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe. I feel immense gratitude and respect for the traditions that we celebrate here today. Mashpee is indeed a place like no other. I, think, I like to think that this history, this connection to the land, and emphasis on community nourishes all of us and provides you, the 2022 graduates of Mashpee High School, with the strength that you need to move forward in life. I'd like to ask that we all take a moment to pause and reflect on the people in your life that got you here. And I'm not just talking to you, our graduates, I'm talking to all of us here under this tent. Think about the people who loved you, supported you, challenged you, celebrated you, and just live in that gratitude with me for a moment. That's what I'd like to use my brief time with you today to discuss, those people in our lives that anchor us. Because you leave, as you leave high school and embark on your next journey, we all want you to live, love, contribute, and connect with others on your way. And it's this last piece, the connections, that I wanted to focus on. A few months ago, I attended a learning session with a guy named Derek Peterson. He's an expert in youth development. His life's work is about helping kids succeed. The main problem, he said, is that if you do everything by yourself, you'll only be as big as yourself. He went on to talk about how we all need people in our life to create this web of support that launches us into our lives and holds us up through challenging times. He asked each of us in the room, who are the people who anchored you? Who are the adults who cared about you? Who expected more out of you than you expected out of yourself? Who parented, taught, coached, guided, or mentored you in these expectations? As he began to talk about the importance of these relationships, I began to reflect on the anchors in my own life that had made such a big difference. My mom, of course, was a huge anchor in my life. Her parents were first-generation immigrants from Italy who put all four of their kids through college. She dreamt of being an art teacher, and she was, briefly, a really good one. But after her first husband died, and my dad and she divorced, she reshaped her life to take care of us, getting whatever job she could do to keep us afloat, help us hold on to our childhood home. She was a single working mother of three, juggling all the activities and needs of her kids, which now as a mother, I appreciate are a lot. <laughs> Yet she persevered, and with the support of her anchors, her mother and her siblings left me wanting for very little. Another anchor was my high school art teacher, Mrs. Henry. We have some fantastic art teachers here too. They remind me a lot of Helen Henry. Picture the classrooms of Mrs. Deschamps or Mrs. Troyanos, this amazing space where we had the freedom to work on things that motivated us, explore new mediums, listen to music, retreat when we uh, needed to just be away from people. She had a way of tamping down any competitive tendencies that were among us and just let us be. She taught me that I could use creativity to calm anxiety or to center myself amidst any storm that life might bring. With my dad across the country, it was my friend's dads who silently stepped in. It was Katie's dad, Jim, who gave me my first job in middle school, updating accounting periodicals in his accounting firm for $3 an hour. That was a thing back then. That was a lot of money. It was uh, Kim's dad, Kay, who loved to cook and introduced me to sushi and kimchi and taught me how to drive a stick. It was Diane's dad, Keith, who had lost his first wife to cancer, whose constant good cheer and optimism and eventual remarriage showed me the true meaning of resilience. It was Heather's dad, Bob, and his devotion to his high school sweetheart and his daughters that showed me what commitment looked like. So even though my dad wasn't there, I was surrounded by fathers. A few years later, it was a mentor I was assigned through a six-week summer program at Georgetown almost 30 years ago, who was responsible for helping me refine that vision of my life that I wanted for myself. Ellen was an award-winning journalist. She had a loving partner, a family, hobbies, friends, 
She ran her own business. She gave back to her community. She didn't place any limits on herself. The thing she would tell you she's most proudest of is that she introduced me to my husband. And we really don't have enough time for me to tell you about the enduring impact that anchor has had on my life. I'm sharing all this with you today because I hope it helps you reflect on the family you are given, the family who finds you, and the family you choose and sustain. Be deliberate in these choices. As I tell the undergraduate students I mentor today, ask for what you need. Take the time to cultivate the relationships, big and small, that will make up your web of support. Some may be temporary, some may be for the rest of your life. Just don't try to go it alone. And don't forget that you can be an anchor for somebody else. Reach back into your community, look for a way to connect with someone who might benefit from your support. I hope today we all have a chance to thank someone in our lives who's been there for us and also be that person for someone else. Together, we go far. Congratulations, class of 2022. Okay. Next, our Mashby Middle High School graduation band will play Exaltation by James Swearingen.
All right, are we ready to get our diplomas? Here we go. Very good. Nicholas Moretti Almeida. Owen Thomas Balfour. Isabella Maria Berganzi. Sophia Elizabeth Berganzi. Miley Beal. Nice job, Miley. It's awesome. Megan Teresa Bennett. Kevon Terrence Blackwood. Christian David Bober. Hunter Frederick Bonenberger. Kit John Bold. Joseph Francis Burton in absentia. Bo Daniel Chesley. Michael Gabriel Chisholm. <laughs> Come on. There you go. Go ahead. Ava Elizabeth Christo. Olivia Grace Cloutier Donahue. Rayshawn Roger Coates. Haley Lace Cogshaw. Ian Rawson Cook. <laughs> Madeline Sands Cook. Great work. Joshua John Crawford. Gabriel Pereira da Silva. Nice job, Good work, man. 
Ryan Christopher Davis. Fiona Harley DeBadges. Peter James DeFrancesco. Mia Daria DeMirdal. Grace Claire Donahue. Camila Dos Santos. Christopher Patrick Distilio. Isabella Marie Egan. Kalia Holly Eaton. Caden David Eaton. Jonah Robert Erdman. Liam Michael Farwell. Vanessa Furla. Ty James Furzoko. Braden Thomas Fitzpatrick. Cameron Jeremy Fournier. Grace Elizabeth Funk. Alexa Ray Garcia. Ava Rose Gonzalez. Sean Allen Gonzalez Jr. Daniel Michael Gould. AJ Gavoni. Andromeda Eve Hamill. Cheyenne Marie Hendricks. <laughs> William Michael Henley. <laughs> 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 
Brett Thomas Hickey, Jr. Thomas Patrick Hogan. Jack Raymond Howard. Brady Thomas Johnston. Tavita David Tuaholo Isera Cap. You got it. <laughs> David Brooks Kelly. Nice job, David. Samantha Lee Kersey. Paige Mackenzie LaCava. Madison Ann Landers. Allison Michelle Leitz. Ryan Thomas Lima. <laughs> Trishel Francis Lowe. <laughs> Richard Xavier Lucas. Leo Stephen Marks. Gregory William Marsters. Jesenia Ariana Maddows. Samantha Teresa Maxwell. Karen Therese Mayen. Abigail Regina McGrory. Kiara Elizabeth Mendoza. <laughs> Eric Frazier Menke. <laughs> Daniel James Mitchell. Ellie Rose Mitchell. Atticus Patrick Moan. Samantha Marie Mori. Hifsa Mustafa. Yeah. Adesia Elise Rochelle Ogaro.
Kaylin May Oakley Robbins. Olivia Christina Oliveira. Luke Michael Olson. Sky or Chulo. Go to backflip too. <laughs> Michael Luigi Perino. Trey Lewan Peters. Dorothea Devin Phillips. Rosemary Hannah Fu. Evelyn Grace Proventure. <laughs> Matthew Hunter Reed. <laughs> Juliana Grace Reynolds. Skyla Caitlin Rimple. <laughs> Michael Andrew Robinson the third. Samantha Rosum. Philip Camille Rudkowski. Zahara Lakita Russell. Robert Jameson Sanborn. Justin John Shepherd. Jalen Isabel Silva. Kyle Bioni Soars. Annabelle Sewell's in absentia. Colin James Spencer. Ella Jeanette Squarsha.
Choi Morgan Squelia. Jack Christopher Stone. Julia Nicole Tenori. Jenna Catherine Thompson. Hunter Alcott Toby. Francesca Jacqueline Lark Taves. Serena Lynn Tripp. Brady Kerrigan Tufts. Great work, Brady. Good luck, my daughter. Mark Anthony Turner. And last but not least, Jonah Sean Wenzel. Way to go, class of 2022. All right, at this time, the valedictorian Isabella Egan is going to come to the stage and give her speech. I was really scared to come up here and speak, but then I remembered that Miss Almeida always says, you can do hard things, and so that's what I'm going to do. So i just like to, s thanks, thanks. <laughs> I would just like to start off by saying thank you to my friends, family, teachers, and classmates who have all helped me get to the point that I am today. I am honored to have achieved this position in such an academically ambitious class, and I congratulate you all on reaching this stage in your scholastic careers. Now you may have seen me around studying or doing math or begging teachers to raise my grade just so I can have the plus at the end of it, but it's true that I've always done pretty well at school, but there's something in my life that has not always gone as well, and this would be softball. <laughs> if you have ever talked to me at the beginning of a spring sports season, you've probably heard me complaining about having to play softball after school. I would dread having to spend two and a half hours every day out on the diamond, and last year I even took a three-day hiatus from the sport, which included me going to some lacrosse games, going out to dinner, and doing some baby goat yoga, which I highly recommend, no regrets. But basically, I did anything but softball. And while I was on my sabbatical, I realized something. I realized, wow, I really hate softball. <laughs> and it was because I had no passion for it that I never wanted to go and would leave at the first chance that I got. So I decided that instead of spending so much time on doing the things that I hated, I would start spending more time on doing what I loved. I liked to read, and I liked math. 
I like to write, and dare I say, I even like to learn. And in doing so, I realized that doing something I enjoyed felt so much better than doing the things that I didn't. And while I might have found joy in my studies, many of you have found joy in other areas of your lives. Some of you have found passion in music, arts, sports, and science. Video making, singing, teaching, the list goes on. With this being said, I offer you each a piece of advice. As long as you are doing what you love, you will never fail. Some of you may have found it already, and some of you will continue to search for it over the next four years. And some of you might need a little more time than that, but once you find it, cling on to it and never give it up. Because you can make a difference in this world, not by doing what is expected of you, but by doing what you love. To finish off, I would like to leave you with a quote once said by Mark Anthony. If you do what you love, you will never work a day in your life. Thank you all for listening, and thank you to my fellow classmates for growing up with me. Happy graduation. Nice job. All right, for the farewell address, I'd like to call up the class president, Skylar Rimple. Welcome families, administrators, teachers, community members, faculty, and most importantly, the beautiful sea of faces looking back at me. I would like to begin in recognition of the fact that we are here today on the sacred land of the Mashpee Wampanoag people and to express utmost gratitude from our class to you. We have finally reached the bittersweet day that is our high school graduation. A celebration of all that we've accomplished and a symbol of transition. Thank you to my mom, who has given me her love for literature and patience as a practice and a virtue. Thank you to my dad, who taught me the impact of positivity and treating people well. Thank you to the parents here before us, who have spent the last 18 years pouring yourselves into this beautiful class. You have all made Mashpee the community it is. You are the parents who welcomed us with hot trays of spaghetti and freshly baked brownies before every game day. You are the parents who cheered with pride at our school plays and talent shows, even when some of us performed unchoreographed routines to Neon Lights by Demi Lovato. <laughs> you are the parents who take time out of your day to bring in bags of children's books for my community service drives and hop on a bike for a charity spin class ride. Thank you to the second moms who sent your kids with extra snacks to share with peers who needed them, to the big brothers and sisters who had to step up to the grandparents who filled gaps with love and care, and to any community member who became family, thank you. Whatever family looks like to you, please know that you are everything to us, and our gratitude is beyond words. I've been to every graduation here since 2017, studying valedictorian and class president speeches in hopes that one day I would give one. There is one common theme that I have heard time and time again, and it is a statement of regret. These speakers always say that they wish they had spent more time building relationships as much as they focused on building resumes. After hearing this so many times, I finally listened. If I had a reading quiz the next day in European history, but there was a hockey game that night, you could be sure you'd see me cheering at Tony Kent. If I had an English assignment, I could have got ahead on, but my soccer team was having a team dinner, at a talent show at a pasta dinner. I stuck around to hear Sam Kersey, Sam Mori, and Kalia's rendition of Chicken Fried. If I had a report to write for ecology that I wasted class time neglecting, but the school play was that night, there was no way I'd miss Jenna in a shark head in our rendition of Puffs. 
I constantly forced myself to live in the moment, which was difficult as I am incredibly sentimental and nostalgic. I found a work-life balance this year, and I am so grateful that I did. So while I may not always remember how to find the antiderivative of the natural log of a polynomial, I will remember that grades do not define you, but instead the relationships you build with your teachers and classmates that speak volumes, unless it's the volume of a definite integral. Then I don't know too much about that either. <laughs> Our attention and appreciation now shift to my beloved peers who have made all 13 years in the Mashpee Public Schools vibrant with memories and lessons I will carry for the rest of my life. We are the sophomores told we would have two weeks off of school, naive to the horrors of what would follow. We are the juniors who fought to be in school with each other rather than remaining divided in cohorts. We are the seniors who excelled despite the pandemic, recording the highest number of students applying early action and early decision. We are the class that is sending 15 students to continue their sports in the NCAA. We are the hours spent getting ready for the middle school semi-formals, homecoming, and the prom. We are the DC trip, some of us more forgetful than others, if you know what I mean. We are the chalk parking spots before the first day of school just as much as we are the hopscotch outside of Casey Coombs at recess. We are the sun that rose over us for senior sunrise and that which fell for senior sunset or truly senior cloud watch. We are our senior nights and our scholarship night. We are our senior projects, raising money for water filters in Nagpur, India, volunteering with Habitat for Humanity, creating databases for prospective nursing students, and interviewing student athletes on their journey with mental health. We are the class that brings in munchkins for each other before big test days. We are the class that will stay at school from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. if it means being first in line to watch our classmates excel in their athletic games that evening. We are the big names at any music festival and art show, having work displayed in various galleries across the Cape and always showing up big in the all Cape and all state competitions. Beyond this, we are strong, we are accomplished, we are capable, and we are worthy of celebration. Ultimately, we are each other. Each one of us is a reflection of each other. This belief is best embodied by the Zulu proverb Ubuntu, which translates to, I am because we are. What we do to others, we do to ourselves, and what we expect to receive, we must emit. We should always seek to serve others, to do good to our neighbors, to build community, and to take care of each other. And it's okay if who is considered each other changes. It should. And don't forget to make sure that you take care of yourself too. Take care of each other. Our tenacity through tragedy gives us the fuel to fight for faithful futures. Our compassion has brought clarity out of clouded confusion. We have inspired inclusion during instability and passion through persistence. We have shown the pertinence of peace and the power of praiseworthy people. May you harbor your humanity to be advocates and accelerators for advancements. May you be mentors of future movement makers and meaningful modifiers of malevolence. For the past four years, I have lived by a mantra that reads, we will not be distracted by comparison if we are captivated with purpose, from Bob Goff. I am honored to know each and every one of you May you never be so distracted by comparison that you take energy away from your purpose. It has been my greatest pleasure to be your class president for the past few years, and I hope you had some fun on all of our trips this week. I wish you wisdom beyond worry and prosperity beyond pain. Congratulations, senior class. I love you and cannot be more proud of you. And so seniors, if you'll join me, and we'll go right to left. Congratulations.
Once again, from all of us here at Mashpee Middle and High School, school committee, the superintendent's office, administrators, faculty, staff, congratulations, class of 2022. At this time, we're going to start the uh, recessional process.